Mr. Thompson for his opening statement. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to everyone. It's been 10 days since a 20-year-old took his father's AR-15 rifle to a campaign event in Butler, Pennsylvania, shot the former president and two others, and took the life of an innocent bystander who died protecting his family. We're grateful for the brave law enforcement officers who responded to the heinous attack and our thoughts and prayers continue to be with the victims and their families. Let me be clear at the outset of today's hearing. The Secret Service has a no-fail mission, and there must be answers and accountability for what occurred. The security failures must be identified and addressed to ensure that they never, ever happen again. That work is already well underway. The Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Pennsylvania State Police have active and ongoing criminal investigations. The Secret Service has begun an internal investigation. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas has announced a bipartisan independent law enforcement review. And later this week, Congress will vote on a resolution to establish a task force on the attempted assassination. This committee also has begun its oversight as well. Yesterday, as the chairman indicated, I joined a bipartisan group of committee members on a visit to the Butler Farm show grounds. We walked the site where the attack occurred. We saw the layout, buildings, and infrastructure for ourselves. We met with local officials and the county sheriff. Today's hearing is the next step in our oversight, and I hope it will be a productive one in keeping with the seriousness of the issue at hand. We must understand what happened in Butler and take corrective action to ensure the security of every Secret Service protectee. I hope to hear from our witnesses today about how state and local law enforcement work with the Secret Service and other federal agencies at these events and where coordination and communication must be improved. While we can have policy differences as Americans, we must be united in condemning political violence in all its forms. There simply is no place for it in our democracy. The attempted assassination is an, another tragic example of the threat high-powered weapons like the AR-15 to our communities and to police officers trying to keep us safe. These weapons have killed regular Americans from all walks of life. Concert goers, church goers, movie goers, grocery shoppers, workers, and yes, even school children. I'm an avid hunter and law-abiding gun owner, but believe strongly that we must do more to keep these weapons off our streets and out of the wrong hands. As we continue our oversight of the events of July 13th, I hope the committee will work at the terrible toll that these weapons are taking and look at them and make some kind of policy decisions to keep them out of the hands of a lot of people who don't deserve them. They are military-style weapons. We use them, to our men and women, to defend people on the battlefield. Our neighborhoods and our communities are not battlefields. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for holding this hearing and the witnesses for being here today. With that, I yield back. The gentleman yields. Uh, other members of the committee are reminded that open